Good morning. My name is Michael Keene, producer and narrator of many local history programs, some of which you may have seen, such as Madhouse, Hard Island, and Abandoned. Today, I would like to introduce you to my latest work called The Code of Handsome Lake. And as you're about to see, The Code of Handsome Lake is somewhat different than my previous programs in uh, several uh, important ways. Number one, instead of using archival photographs, we have opted for original artist renderings. The reason for that being that the story of Handsome Lake takes place in 1800, and of course that was long before the advent of photography. We have also have added state-of-the-art animation. Um, number two, we have replaced my narration with the narration of six other professional voice actors, including five absolutely fabulous Native American voice actors. And three, instead of using just brief musical interludes like we have done in the past, we've decided this time to go for a full-throated musical score done by the brilliant Andy Calabrese. The story of Handsome Lake begins in a Seneca village in 1745, where Handsome Lake was born. He was originally from an area of New York now known as Avon, New York, located in western New York. And later in life, Handsome Lake became desperately ill with alcoholism. In fact, he was able to stay alive simply because his daughter, uh, cared for him for a, a full four-year period where he was not even able to get out of bed. According to Handsome Lake, one night he claimed to have been visited by three spirit messengers sent to him by the Great Spirit. And the purpose of this visit was that the spirit messengers were to, number one, cure Handsome Lake of his alcoholism, and number two, to impart upon him a new moral code that he was to go out and teach to his people. One final aspect to this incredible story, and again, it occurred over 200 years ago, was Handsome Lake's references to various social issues of his day that are amazingly similar to some of our present-day concerns of abortion, drug abuse, climate change, and materialism. So again, I take great pride in welcoming you to the Code of Handsome Lake. Thank you. The beginning was early in the moon, in the year 1800. The place is Corn Planter Village. Now a party of people move. They go down in canoes. They plan to hunt during the autumn and winter seasons. They go farther down the river. They land in a village of white people. Here they barter their skins dried meat and fresh game for strong drink. Now all the men are filled with strong drink. They yell and sing like demented people. Now they are homeward bound. They go up Corn Planter Creek where they had left their wives and their children. 
Now the party is home. The men revel in strong drink. Now their families become frightened and move away for safety. The drunken men now run yelling through the village. Now they are beast-like and run without clothing. All have weapons and injure those they meet. Now there are no doors left in the houses, for they have been kicked off. Now there are no fires in the village. Now the men with strong drink have trodden in the fireplaces. They leave their footprints. Now the dogs yelp and cry, for they are hungry. So this is what happens. A man becomes sick. Some strong power holds him. As he lies in sickness, he meditates and longs that he may rise again and walk the earth. He thinks how evil and loathsome he is. He begins singing, and while singing, has strong drink. Now he comes to his mind that perchance evil has risen again, and he resolves to use it nevermore. Yet he continues to think of this every day and every hour. Then a time comes, and he craves drink again, for he believes he cannot recover his strength without it. Now the two ways he thinks, what he once did, and whether he will ever recover. Now he lives through the night and sees another day. So he prays that he may see the night again, and it is so. Because of this, he thanks the great ruler. Now this man has been sick for four years, and the name of the sick man is Ganyo Deo, Handsome Lake. Now the daughter of the sick man is sitting outside the house. The sick man is within, alone. The door is ajar. Suddenly, she hears the sick man exclaim, Neo. Then she hears him rising and thinks how he is but yellow skin and dried bones from his four years of sickness. The daughter then sees her father coming out of doors. He totters. She rises quickly to catch him, but he falls dying. Now, she carries him back within the house and dresses him for burial. Now, he is dead. Now, many people are weeping for many hours. No one speaks. Now, it is early morning and the dew is drying. This is the time of trouble, for he lies dead. Now they come and feel over the body. They notice a warm spot. It is spreading. Now the time is noon, and they feel the warm blood pulsing in his veins. Now his breath comes, and now he opens his eyes. Now the people notice the man is moving his lips. So these are the first words that Ganyadeo spoke. Never have I seen such wondrous vision. I saw three men clothed in fine, clean raiment. They were the most noble and commanding of men. Their cheeks were painted red. Only a few feathers were in their bonnets. They had in one hand bows and arrows as canes. In the other hand were huckleberry bushes and berries of every color. And then 
the being spoke. He who created the world employed us to come to Earth and go to the sick man and help him recover. We say to you, take these berries and eat of every color. They will give you strength. Before noon, the people will gather at the council house and give you the early strawberries. They will make strawberry wine sweetened with sugar. Then they will drink the juice of the berry and thank the Creator for your recovery. When you are well, we will tell you how things ought to be upon the earth. For whatsoever you think is evil, is evil. And now behold, look through the valley and between the two hills. Look between the sunrise and the moon. In that place, a man is buried who refused to obey the great messenger. He will never rise from that spot. So now we say to you, proclaim the message we give you and tell it truly before all people. Now the first thing has been finished and it remains for us to uncover all wickedness before you. So they said, and he said, it was that way. Now it is time for our departure. We shall go on a journey. Then you will see the coming of the fourth messenger. More, you will see the house of the Punisher and the lands of our Creator. Suddenly, a road slowly descended from the self sky, and thereon they saw four tracks of the human race going in one direction. Then they saw more brilliant light than the light of the earth appear. So they proceeded a short distance and saw a house with three different things. The first was a pair of handcuffs, the second a whip, and the third a hang rope. Truly it is a strongly built house. It is a prison. The three things you see are for punishment. So they proceeded on their journey and saw a man continually distorting himself. At times horn shot from his forehead, at times a cloven foot appeared, and then a tail was visible. Behold the Punisher. It is he who torments those who refuse the words of Gewo when they had them on this earth. See the Punisher cry, Come hither, and put a vessel filled with molten metal in the hands of a man, and say to him, Drink the hot drink you love. And now the man pleads, but the Punisher compels him to swallow the molten metal. Then the man screams and falls to the ground with vapor steaming from his throat. This is the punishment for those who persist in taking fiery drink. Then, after a while, they saw a woman sitting, and she was large in size and snatching at everything about her. She appeared not able to rise. It is true what you see is the evil of gluttony. She cannot stand and will remain forever having satisfied herself with the things of the earth. They are unable to stand upon the heaven road. Now as they looked, the Punisher forced a woman into a great cauldron filled with boiling liquid. The woman cried out that it was too hot, and soon her bones rattled to the bottom. This is the punishment given to those who practice witchcraft. Such things happen to those who will not believe in Gehru 
Now they saw a man with his eyes bulged from his head, with flames of fire from his tongue. This is punishment for those who quarrel and fail to repent. Now they saw a woman whose body was naked and writhing serpents. See that woman. She gives secret powders to men to attract them. This is punishment for those who don't repent. Now they saw two men playing cards, and suddenly flames spurted out, burning and eating their flesh until the meat fell off. This is punishment for those who handle cards and who don't repent. Now they began to inhale. Heated air, and hear faraway echoes of mournful, terrible cries from the doom, born on the blast of the hot wind. Now another word. It is a sad one. The great ruler has ordained that women should bear children. Now, a young married woman is with child, and she suffers much. Now, she takes strong medicine to cut off the child and to prevent forever other children from coming. The Creator is sad. He created life to live, and wishes those who employ such medicines to cease these practices forevermore. Now, they must stop when they hear this message. Go and tell your people. So they said, and he said, it was that way. Now they continued on their journey, and before long, came upon a sturdy house with many animals and rows of corn, beans, and squash. The messenger then said, "Now for our final message before our journey ends. This concerns the white man and the things your brethren should follow. The first is that the white man works a tract of cultivated ground and harvests food for his family. So if he should die, they will have the ground for help." The second is that the white man builds a house. He builds one warm and fine appearing. So if he dies, the family has the house for help. The third is that the white man keeps horses and cattle. So if he dies, his family has the stock for help. The last concerns education. In the white man's schools, now let the council appoint twelve people to study, two from each nation of the six. So many white people are about you that you must study to know their ways. So they said, and he said, it was that way. After a short time, they came to a halt, and beheld a beautiful spring, a clear fount of water, a place for refreshment, where they partook of the spring, and rested. After a while, they went upon a narrow road, and saw a brilliant light. Then they smelled fragrant odors of flowers. The most marvelous and beautiful things were on every hand. And all these things were on the heaven road. Then the messenger finally said, "Now we have arrived at the point where you must return. You are now going to your new home. Here there is a house prepared for your eternal abode. But should you enter a room, you can never go back to the earth world." But fear not; the children will comfort you. Now it happened that it came to pass that all the children assembled, 
So great was his grief of leaving them, he could hardly speak. He now rose and exhorted them to be ever faithful. And then the great multitude heard him say, Thus it had happened in the past, and it is the truth. I must now take up my final journey. I had a dream, a beautiful vision. I saw a pathway, a trail, overgrown and covered with grass, so that it appeared not to have been traveled in a long time. To those gathered about me, hear my message. Soon, I will step into my new home. Whosoever follows my teachings, I will look back with outreached arms and invite them into the new world of the Creator. <laughs> 